Hey guys, this is Dao Too Fast here. I'm back with another video. In today's video, I will be replacing the radiator on my Honda Odyssey. This is a 2008 Honda Odyssey with about 78,000 miles. And over the past couple of months, when I parked the car in the garage, I smell antifreeze. So after looking at it for a little bit, I realized there's a leak on the radiator. Let me show you where I'm seeing the leak. First thing I'll do is remove this plastic cover right here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight clips. I've gone ahead and removed some of the clips already, leaving these two on the front. Get yourself a screwdriver and then remove the center pin. And then you can remove the clip. Now this panel will come out. Looking at the top of the radiator, you can see antifreeze that's all over the top here. And also, if I bring the camera to the side, you can see antifreeze on this side and also on this side. So we have a leak between the top plastic cover and the aluminum radiator at the bottom here. And that's why you see all these antifreeze at the top right here. Here's a look at the parts and tools you'll need for this job. Starting on the left, we have the spill-free funnel from Lyle. This will help us bleed any air in the system. Next to it is the Honda Long Life Antifreeze. This is the blue one. It's about $20 a gallon. Now, draining your radiator takes about one gallon of fluid. I did pick up two additional jugs in case if I need it. In the front, we have some hand tools, channel lock, wrench, screwdriver, some pliers, and hose clamps. On the right we also have the drain pan to catch the fluid when we drain the radiator. Jack stands and also a floor jack to raise the front of the vehicle up. For this Honda Odyssey I'll be installing this new radiator from the company Spectra Premium part number CU2806. This will fit all the Honda Odyssey from 2005 to 2010. And Let's have a quick look. This is the radiator inside the box. Go ahead and pull up on this plastic clip right here and remove this. There's another one on the other side. Next we'll remove this bracket that's holding the condenser. It's held in by one 10 millimeter bolt. Then we'll remove this bracket that's holding in the radiator. That's also held in by one 10 millimeter bolt. Now repeat the same procedure on the other side to remove those two brackets. Now jack up the front of the car and place the floor jack underneath the front tow hook. Place your jack stand underneath the jack support area underneath your vehicle. Now lower the vehicle onto the jack stands. Underneath the front bumper, there are these clips you got to remove all along the edge right here. On the bottom splash shield, there are a couple more clips you got to remove one over here, one back here, and then we'll remove this entire panel. Here's a look at the splash shield that's removed. There was another clip in the middle. Also, there was one more clip at the back corner right here. Once I removed all the clips, and this piece came off. Now put the drain pan underneath your vehicle and on the passenger side there is a drain valve right here that can loosen to drain the coolant. While that's draining we'll remove this hood latch right here it's held in by three 10 millimeter bolts right here. Now before you remove it, you might want to get a marker and mark the corners so you know where it goes when you reinstall it.
At the end of this cable, there's also a connector you need to disconnect. That connector at the bottom is actually clipped in at the bottom here, so I use a screwdriver and then carefully push on both sides. And then the connector was able to come out. Here's what it looks like. Along the hood release cable right here, there's another plastic clip. You need to release this. Now put the hood latch on the side. Remove the clamp that's holding the upper radiator hose. You might need to use a screwdriver and break the seal. Now we'll disconnect the upper radiator hose. Now we'll lift the radiator up slightly and that'll give us more room underneath to disconnect the transmission line. So let me show you what you need to disconnect and unbolt at the bottom of the radiator. So right here we have the lower radiator hose. Next to it we have the transmission line. Now on the transmission line there is a metal bracket right next to it that you need to remove a 10 millimeter bolt. Moving over to the passenger side we have the other transmission line. You need to remove that. And on this line there's also a metal bracket right in the middle right here and this bracket is held in by a 10 millimeter bolt right here and that's why you want to lift the radiator up just a bit so that you can access the bolts right here and also the clamp that's holding the transmission line so I'm going to start with disconnecting the transmission line on the passenger side now before I can remove the hose I do need to remove this bracket that's holding this hose down it's held in by a 10 millimeter bolt Go ahead and also remove the second bracket that's to the left of this lower radiator hose and that's held in by a 10 millimeter bolt. Now we can pull the hose back on the passenger side. Now before you completely disconnect this, I'll be using a hose clamp to clamp the hose so I don't lose too much transmission fluid. Now we can remove this other transmission fluid line on the driver's side. Here I have a hose plier to just break loose the hose. I'll also put a hose clamp on this. Now we'll disconnect the lower radiator hose. Put a drain pan underneath this hose and then we'll remove this off the radiator. Now before you pull this out, you do need to disconnect the two connectors, one on the passenger side and there's one on the driver side. On the wiring harness, there's also a clip that you need to release. To release a connector, use a flathead screwdriver and push on this plastic tab right here. And while you're pushing on it, 
you want to pull that connector out. There you go. And the same thing for this connector, push on the tab on the back side, and then you release the connector. Now you should be able to lift this whole assembly up. So I was hoping that I can pull the radiator out without removing the bumper, but that's not possible. So next step is to remove the bumper, and it's not that difficult. With the bottom clips all removed already, uh, there are only two screws on the side that you need to remove, and then the bumper will come out. And let me show you that right now. There's a Phillips screw on the side of the bumper you need to remove. Right at this corner, there's also a Phillips screw that goes in this way. Go ahead and remove that one. Now you can release the clips along this edge. Now with the bumper off, we can carefully take this radiator assembly out. 